guys, welcome to another video. Today's topic is actually a topic that you guys have been requesting for so long and I really wanted to make sure that I had all of the information, all the thoughts down on paper so that we can dive in and I can share with you about something that's super common and that is autoimmune conditions. So an autoimmune condition, it's really a problem for people from many standpoints of I have symptoms from this autoimmune condition or I'm nervous about this autoimmune condition creating cancers. I don't feel good from this condition. My tissue is breaking down. Autoimmune conditions are the, the big hitters, if you will, in the field of health and wellness because when you have an autoimmune condition, what's happening is your systemic immune system, your entire immune system is involved. So what, you know, why that matters is because not every single problem that we develop with our health is of the autoimmune caliper. Sometimes we just develop a problem with our pancreas. Sometimes we just develop a problem with our gallbladder. But when we're having an autoimmune condition, what's happening is our entire immune system, our entire systemic body is affected. And that can create a lot of problems for people from a symptom standpoint. So what is an autoimmune condition? like? what's happening there auto means self so we're having basically a self attack to our own immune system and why would that happen you know we think about that the why why would i be attacking myself and it's really from a confusing i'm going to downplay it but it's from a very confusing chemical process that's happening so what happens with an autoimmune condition is our own immune system starts to attack itself and each player or each system can actually be involved. So there's general immune system, autoimmune conditions, and then there's some other like specific ones. For example, we basically name them. So if I have an immune system attack to my joints, we call it rheumatoid arthritis. If I have an immune system attack to my thyroid, we call it Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If I have an immune system attack to my whatever organ we talk about, we call it a certain condition. So we name the autoimmune conditions based on the organ that they affect. And sometimes they're full blown where every single organ system is, effect, is affected by this autoimmune condition. So very rarely do autoimmune conditions stay at one specific spot because think of it like this. If we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis, we have joints everywhere. So yes, the autoimmune component is I'm having problems and I'm attacking my joints, my knees, my, my hands. Uh, maybe I'm developing different types of like Hebrodine nodes and just different types of changes to my tissue from the attack that's happening to my joints. In the case of rheumatoid, maybe there's panis formation happening inside the joint. Well, that happens in a systemic way because we have joints everywhere. Now, yes, in different autoimmune conditions, different systems are involved. Not all joints are affected in rheumatoid. There's some, some notable ones. The point is that we feel a lot of problems because everything is involved when we have an autoimmune condition. So I have some notes here, of course, like usual, so I can stay on track with you guys. And I wanted to answer some of the more common questions. These ones came from Instagram. So for those of you that don't follow me on Instagram, please do, do so. That's where actually I spend most of my time. Um, what triggers autoimmune disorders? That was question number one. So let's start there. Typically microorganism invasion things like bacterial infection, things like stealth infections, yeast, protozoa, microorganisms. So you can think of them like critters. So we pick up a critter and our host or our self immune system starts to go haywire. We start flagging things, we start turning genes on. Definitely from a stealth infection standpoint, we actually can have problems with our immune system. Now, something that I see in my patients see pretty frequently is Triple digit Epstein-Barr virus causes positive ANA. So an ANA is just a blood marker. It's a, it's a pre-screen test for, does this person have an autoimmune condition? So we look in the blood work, we take blood work and we ask, does this person have an autoimmune condition? How do we know? Well, we're gonna know based on lab work. That's step one. I'm just using this for an example because sometimes people get back their results and they have a positive ANA and they have a numerical value. And they're, they're wondering why. I don't, I don't have um, some of the positive markers for lupus. I don't have some of the positive markers for Strogan's. I don't have a double-stranded DSDNA antibody. I don't have a Smith antibody. I don't fit the criteria, but they have stealth infections in the background. They have microorganisms that are causing lots of problems for their immune system. 
triple digit viral load. Epstein Barr is one of those. There's many types of viruses that can cause problems with the immune system, but that's the most notable one. Okay. Drugs, certain drugs actually can change the immune system and create autoimmune conditions. So there's known pharmaceuticals out there that create problems with the immune system and the way that we're processing things. There is a very strong genetic component to immune conditions. So if mom or dad had one, we typically will end up being at a greater risk to develop them. Now, I'm not of the kind of notion that just because mom had it, it's normal for me, right? No, I don't fall into that. I don't believe in that. You can be the one to change your genes, the things that you do, the way that you live your life, the way that you think, the thoughts, the, the foods you put in, the way that you support yourself all can actually turn on and turn off genes. So just because someone had it doesn't mean that you get a pass because these things still cause problems. And I hear a lot of my patients share with me, they're like, well, my mom had that, so it's fine, right? No. Oh, my mom has high cholesterol, so it's okay, right? No, the body is not gonna say you get a pass because it's your genetics. You still have problems that can be associated with this, but there is a very strong genetic component. And unfortunately, when we have one autoimmune condition going on, we should be looking for others because they love to kind of clump together. So having one autoimmune condition does predispose us to getting another autoimmune condition. They kind of cluster in families. So how would I know if I have an autoimmune disease? Like, what would I know? A lot of times you experience symptoms. Not always. I have people that are like, I felt nothing. I don't feel any of that stuff. But typically you have symptoms. You, you're achy, you're lethargic, you have brain fog, which means you have inflammation in your brain. You feel joint pain, you feel back pain, you feel sometimes low-grade fevers. You're spiking little low-grade fevers that you're not sure why. You might be just feeling under the weather. Sometimes you might get swollen lymph nodes or feel um, just full-blown achy. Those are some of the things that can actually happen with the immune system. So really anything that you could develop during a flu, joint pain, headache, achiness, those are all things that can actually happen when you have an autoimmune condition from a symptom standpoint. So really autoimmune conditions cause pain, they cause fatigue, they cause shifts with your energy, they cause shifts with your focus. There's a lot of things that actually can happen from a symptoms perspective. Sometimes you know nothing about the symptoms. I have people that get blood work done and are alarmed. They're like, what the heck? I didn't know I had this thing. Um, so that's something that can happen as well. How do we know? We do blood work. We do some comprehensive blood work and we look, we always do an ANA. We always get the numerical value in terms of the titer load, the viral titer load or the ANA titer load. We always get the appearance. Is it um, speckled? Is it homogenous? What, does the, what do the cells look like? So there's some broad spectrum tests that we do. And then depending on what condition we think it could be, we go down the rabbit hole. We say, is this looking more like rheumatoid? Is this looking more like Hashimoto's? Is this looking more like Graves' disease? Is this looking more like some type of autoimmune pancreatic um, insufficiency? Is this something that's coming from a digestive issue? So we, we can check the different things. Is it Trogans? All of these different conditions, but the broad spectrum is um, blood work. So always get tested for blood work. There's, there's ways to do it. Now, a lot of people ask me, when I get regular blood work, aren't they looking for these things? The answer is no, they're not. So this is not, the autoimmune markers are not gonna come up on a conventional blood work panel. They're not gonna show up on a CBC, a complete blood count. They're not gonna show up on a CMP, a comprehensive metabolic profile. These are not tests that are general. Um, although the ANA is a pre-screen, you'd have to almost suspect that someone has this before you go looking for it. So in terms of wouldn't I know, like wouldn't my doctor have told me if I have this condition based on some of my blood work? The answer is no, unless you're being strategically sought out to say, am I dealing with an immune system problem? Then probably no, okay? Um, what is the role of sleep in autoimmune conditions? Awesome question, awesome question. When you're actually sleeping, that's where you're getting a lot of immune modulation happening. So the sleep cycle allows you to repair tissue. Sleep is really, really gonna be an important factor when it comes to autoimmune conditions. Now, can sleep by itself create problems with the immune system? Yes. Can sleep by itself reverse problems of autoimmune conditions? Not necessarily. It's usually not powerful enough, especially when there's an underlying um, 
infection. So we really want to make sure why does someone have an immune system dysregulation to begin with? Because that's step one. How do we help you heal? We have to know what we're dealing with. This, the sleep compounds are so involved though with autoimmune con uh, conditions because that's where you're able to recover and repair. So for those of you thinking I'm getting four or five hours of sleep and I feel fine, you're not fine. You're not fine from a tissue perspective. You're not fine from a chemical perspective because you do need sleep, quality sleep. It's not so much the hours. I'm not so concerned with like I slept, you know, 12 hours or eight hours, but it's more about the quality. Are you getting really good quality sleep? That's more of the component that we look at. So there is a very strong role in terms of sleep in autoimmune conditions. Somebody was asking me about using some autoimmune formulas or using some immune system formulas like elderberry, zinc, monolaurin, lysine, some of the autoimmune herbs, garlic, bilberry extract. Not everybody is a candidate for all herbs, especially when it comes to the immune system because certain things can actually ramp up the immune system, which is not always what we wanna do with autoimmune conditions. Sometimes we wanna quiet the system down. Now, autoimmune conditions can actually create symptoms that might not even appear autoimmune at all. For example, skin rashes. There's times people come in and they show me their rashes on their hands or their stomach or their face, their, uh, their torso, and we might link it to an immune system component. Typically why that happens is that autoimmune conditions create the body to have almost this massive robust response to everything. We actually can develop food allergies over time. We start flagging food as problematic when we have underlying problems with the immune system. So we become very reactive. We start to have sensitivity to smell. All of a sudden someone's perfume is making us super nauseous. We start to have problems with digesting food. We start to have brain fog. We start to develop rashes and we start to not tolerate things like we used to. Maybe even textures of things like certain compounds that are on our skin or maybe we're using the same detergent and all of a sudden we're having an adverse response. Why? The immune system is heightened and it starts to flag things left and right when it's overactivated. And so an autoimmune condition could be an overactivity of the immune system, which it typically is, or a not even overactivity, but a mismatch immune system where the immune system is just not doing what it should in different times. So for example, this is a really good example, kind of confusing, but I want to share it with you that when someone gets autoimmune thyroid conditions, thyroiditis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, autoimmune thyroid conditions, what happens with their immune system is this, that we typically pick up an infection, Epstein-Barr, it's the thyroid virus. If you guys do not know this by now, please, please, please go back to some of my previous videos, consume some content because if you're dealing with a thyroid problem, chances are you have a virus and it's typically Epstein-Barr because that's most notably known as the thyroid virus. So we get infected with this virus. Now we actually um, have what's called seeding the thyroid, where the virus particles, for whatever reason, they go into the thyroid gland. So we have a virus that travels into our thyroid gland and our immune system says, wait, there's a virus in the thyroid. Go, go to the thyroid immune system, do the things. We have an attack in our thyroid. So as a host, as a human, we start to mount an immune response. We start to attack the thyroid, not really attacking the thyroid, we're attacking the virus that lives in the thyroid. So with something called molecular mimicry, we mistake the actual virus that lives in the thyroid as we are attacking the thyroid. We're not attacking the thyroid intentionally, we are to some degree because we're attacking the particles that live in the thyroid through, like I said, molecular mimicry and different antigen specific interactions, different ways the immune system is saying we have trouble here in this area. So that's kind of an easy example where you guys can, can get a sense of how do infections create problems for my immune system? How, how come I'm developing this problem? There's always infection involved. I would say eight out of 10 times with an autoimmune condition. So those are really some of the more general things that if you're dealing with an autoimmune condition, get your blood work tested. It has to be done from a, a thought process that we're thinking of your immune system. It's not gonna be from general blood work testing. If you suspect that you have symptoms of an autoimmune condition, 
do the blood work. Absolutely. How do we support the immune system? So let's just pretend that someone's like, yeah, I have this massive immune system thing going on. Enzyme replacement therapy is always going to be in your forecast. If you're dealing with an autoimmune condition, there are ways that we can support quieting down the immune system or helping it to not be as reactive or helping it to not be as responsive. So enzyme replacement therapy, for those of you guys that don't know, that's what I practice. Enzyme therapy helps to heal tissue. They help enzymes help to repair any damage from a metabolic standpoint. Supplements are typically not strong enough for autoimmune conditions, especially when we're dealing with stealth infections as the causative agent for the immune system dysregulation. So that would be definitely something to look at. Now, taking pharmaceuticals, they help symptoms. They don't stop the autoimmune component from happening. In certain conditions, there are some heavy hitter drugs that yes, they can quiet down the immune system, but it's kind of like, I wouldn't say trading your soul to the devil, but you're bargaining because when you start some of these immune system heavy hitting drugs and pharmaceuticals, a lot of side effects are associated with it. So yes, you might quiet your immune system down and not always. I see a lot of people on some heavy hitter drugs that they have no cortisol left. They produce none of their own because they're on so much prednisone and so much cortisone. They're on so many anti-inflammatories. Um, Basically, the doctors are trying to just quiet and calm the immune system. You do run the risk at turning it off completely and then what do you do when you have no immune system so there's a very fine line what i would suggest of course being a holistic provider is you want to try all of the natural things first before you take out the heavy hitting drugs because once you start those things it's very difficult sometimes to come off of them i'm not against them people need them people need pharmaceuticals i'm not against that but when you go down that rabbit hole, you actually start to have problems with organs. Now you need to make sure that every couple months your kidneys are being checked. Now you need to make sure every few months that your liver activity, your liver enzymes are being tested for because these compounds, these drugs are very toxic to the body. So if you are expecting that you have an autoimmune condition, I'm just encouraging you that there are so many ways to support yourself from a non-conventional standpoint through not using pharmaceuticals. And typically it's through enzyme therapy. I don't want to really want to talk too much about that because it's a different video, but I'm more than happy to share with you guys about enzymes. So I just wanted to create that to give you guys a little bit more information about the immune system. It's a, I'm literally, it's such a complicated process. And if you start to read about this stuff with the immune system, it's, it's really, really, really complicated. There's different parts of the immune system, your innate immune system, your adaptive immune system. There's different immunoglobulins involved. There's different antigen presenting cells. There's so much complexity to this entire process. I'm really dumbing it down and not even dumbing it. I'm just making it more user friendly. Um, you kind of have to with this stuff because it's super intense, but there's ways to support yourself. So the point is that if you have an autoimmune condition, maybe you don't know, maybe you do know, there are so many things you can do to support yourself through this process. From nutritional standpoints, you can definitely implement some awesome strategies to quiet the immune system. Certain enzymes, metabolic enzymes, lymphatic enzymes, getting rid of infection, uh, triple digit viral load is also something to do. So there's so many things that you can do to be proactive. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful and have learned a little bit about immune system dysregulation and autoimmune conditions in general. And like I said, thanks for tuning in. But also if you have other questions, please let me know if you're interested to uh, have me make a video all about enzyme therapy. Let me know. See you guys in the next one.